afternoon, I'm Steve Hensley. First at four, Governor Andy Bashir made some stops in our region today, announcing funding for local cities and counties. WIMT's Dakota Makris has more from West Liberty. The governor said he was excited to be in West Liberty today, where he announced funding for both Morgan and Menifee counties. He says most of the awards today are from the cleaner water program. He says this program is crucial because people in almost every Kentucky County do not have access to clean drinking water. The city of West Liberty received three cleaner water program awards totaling more than $400,000 to replace sewer lines in neighboring Menifee County. The county will use more than $100,000 to make much needed upgrades to a sanitation district. That money is going to make a big difference in what we're able to do in Menifee County in economic development because that's what Menifee County needs as well. We need some economic development over there. Now the city of Frenchburg will use a little more than $91,000 for a water extension project for customers. In Morgan County, Dakota Makeris, WYMT Mountain News. The governor also made a stop in Rowan County today announcing similar funding. Owsley County Athletic Director Bobby Bowling died on Monday after a fight with cancer. Bowling grew up in Owsley County where he played basketball in high school. Years before, he returned to the school to become the AD. He was loved by student athletes, co-workers, and community members. Owsley County Superintendent Tim Bobrowski says he had a special gift to make a positive impact on those around him. Bob was always the type of guy that wanted to do better. He wasn't content with where he was at. And I think that message alone goes a long way because a lot of times we as human beings, we as uh, people within our community, we often feel like that we can't do anymore. And Bob always gave everyone a, a shine of light that was saying, I, you can do better, coach. Bowling left an impact on other programs as well. He coached at several different schools in the region before returning home to Owsley County. Well, throughout the day today, we've been watching milder air working into the mountains. That's because we've seen high pressure scoot off to the east, and we've been watching a warm front begin to encroach upon the mountains. It's actually a pretty nice looking day outside and a nice feeling day in some spots as well. 52 the temperature in Wise, Virginia right now. The campus of UVA Wise, gorgeous view there at the moment as we continue on. As we continue on, there we go, downtown Whitesburg. Hey, look, the camera's working this afternoon. We're sitting at 57 right now, but it feels like 65. That's because of those southerly winds bringing up the warmer air. We're close to the mid-60s, some spots. Low to mid-60s around the region. Monticello checking in at 64. A few degrees cooler, though, as you head into the Big Sandy, where we're still in the mid to upper 50s. Pushing forward, satellite and radar. In good shape. Another clear day. Nothing to see in terms of some clouds other than some high cloudiness out there. And that's true for the whole region as well. But we do have changes on the way. Go ahead and download that WYNT weather app if you haven't already. You probably will need it though by the end of the week as we continue to watch the potential for showers returning to the forecast. Not tonight though. Clear skies into the mid 30s out there for tonight. That's slightly milder than the past couple of nights. I'll have the latest on when things get really mild coming up in just a few minutes. Steve. Evan, thank you. There are signs that diplomacy is not yet off the table to avoid a war between Russia and Ukraine. Russia's defense minister announced its forces near the border with Ukraine will march home once its large-scale military exercises are over. President Vladimir Putin told German Chancellor Olaf Scholz that he is ready to negotiate with NATO and the U.S., but Russia's actions are still being questioned by many in Europe and here in the U.S. It strains credulity to think that they would have this many troops uh, arrayed along the border with Ukraine and in Bela and Belarus simply for winter exercises. Adding to the concern, satellite images show a deployment of a new helicopter squadron and soldiers to Belgorod, Russia, just 24 miles from the border with Ukraine. The State Department issued two new travel warnings. The U.S. is now advising Americans to avoid travel to Belarus and Moldova. Both countries are friendly with Russia and could be used to launch attacks into Ukraine. If Russia invades Ukraine, it could drive gas prices even higher back here at home. 
The price of oil is already above $90 a barrel, the highest it's been since 2014. CBS's Errol Barnett reports from Washington. Now, typically, we see gas prices dip at this time of year when it's colder and Americans are spending more time at home. But 2022 is different. Take a look at this. AAA reports that the national average of a price of gasoline jumped to $3.49 in the past week. That's 19 cents more than a month ago and nearly a dollar more than a year ago. Now, the main cause of this recent increase is the high cost of crude oil. That is key here. According to the U.S. Energy Information Administration, more than half the cost of gas we pay is dependent on that price of oil and Russia produces more than a tenth of the world's oil supply so any military action by Russia in Ukraine could certainly send the price of oil over $100 a barrel. Now it's important to note that while the U.S. is not a major importer of Russian oil if the global market value of a barrel jumps um, certainly there'll be a domino effect and Americans will feel that here at the pump so what happens overseas could certainly hit you in your wallet. Errol Barnett, CBS News, Washington. The Washington Post is also reporting the White House and top Democratic lawmakers are considering a gas tax holiday. There's a new push in the state legislature to help better ensure voting is accessible to all eligible Kentuckians. Democratic Senator Reggie Thomas filed Senate Bill 159, which would expand the state's early voting from three days to 12 and close polls an hour later on Election Day. It also targets registration, allowing people to register when applying for a driver's license or on Election Day. It would also allow for absentee voting if more convenient. If, 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 if you're sick or you're elderly and you want to vote, and, 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 and you don't have the, the health or the strength or the ability to go to the polls and vote, you don't have to. Lawmakers are reacting to the bill and overall opinions seem mixed. Republican Secretary of State Michael Adams did not reject or express support for SB 159. Instead, he commented, quote, too many lawmakers around our country are offering partisan election bills rather than consulting with election officials and working across party lines. Election policy should be made in a bipartisan way, as I've done. Senate Bill 159 must pass through the committee before it can be voted on in the general session. Let's head over to Wall Street now on this Tuesday. The Dow closes up today more than 422 points. We'll have more financial news in our next half hour. CDC data shows the pace of Americans getting COVID-19 vaccine booster shots has reached a new low, and many public health experts are concerned. As of Monday, about 64% of Americans are fully vaccinated against the coronavirus with at least their initial two-dose series, and 28% have received a booster shot. A new study published Tuesday found a third dose can help COVID-19 immunity last longer. After two doses, antibodies are largely ineffective after about six months. Babies whose mothers were vaccinated against the coronavirus have a reduced risk of being hospitalized with the disease. A new study published Tuesday by the CDC found infants are protected for the first six months of their lives. Researchers say pregnant women who got their shot later on in their pregnancies have an 80% chance of protecting their babies. That chance reduces to 32% if they got it early on. The study monitored 379 children who were hospitalized with COVID and other sicknesses at 20 pediatric hospitals between July and mid-January of this year. Still to come on First at Four, we take you to the Winter Olympics where a drug test scandal takes a surprising turn. And a nice change of pace from the cold weather we've seen over the past little bit. It's all ahead of another rain chance working into the region. I'll have the latest coming up.